to start. I was about to start, <laughs> yeah. And you start talking. <laughs> Welcome to Day One Fast, episode 48. I'm Ryan Johnson. Uh, how's it going? How's everyone doing? Peachy. Peachy? It's Valentine's Day. Yeah, we're all here on Valentine's Day, so. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Matt, you're here on Valentine's Day. I am. Marty? I am also here. And Adriano? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we got a pretty good show for you. Uh, we were gone last week. Um, sorry about that. But uh, So we got a, a big show for you this week. Um, all the good stories from the last, last couple of weeks here all piled into one awesome show. Super duper show. Yep. Uh, so some of our top stories include uh, Michael Pachter's views on PlayStation Now. Uh, we also have Flappy Bird. <laughs> <laughs> we're, That's we'll, such an we'll interesting get into that. story. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit. Um, some more Nintendo news. We always like covering the Nintendo, keeping an eye on them, and uh, much, much more as well. So stay tuned for all of that. We're going to start off with what we're playing, and um, Adriano. Oh. That's, yeah. Uh, I was, and I promise you I actually was going to start playing Tomb Raider, mm-hmm. and um, I, I read the, the prequel graphic novel that came with my game. Do you normally do that? Like the Arkham one had prequel novels, right? Or graphic novels? The Arkham City one did, yeah. Did you read those before? Uh, yeah. There's Arkham City, which is takes place just before the game Arkham City. Then there's uh, Arkham Unhinged. I don't know what it is, though. I think it just might be like a novelization of the game itself. Okay. Um, but and that's a two, terrible title. Arkham, <laughs> and, yeah, and and there and it's not like one one graphic novel; it's like two or three of them. Mm. And like the the cover's not even very good. Um, but yeah, going back to the Tomb Raider one, they're actually making a whole um, comic book series of Tomb Raider now. Well, I'm not going to read all those. <laughs> just read the one I got. The art looks really bad. Some people like it. It is it's very. It's very. Lazy. Is it the same art that's in the the, the prequel uh, comic? Probably. It yeah, it's really art. bad. But uh, yeah. Did you break your thing, Marty? Yeah, I broke it. <laughs> broken. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's broken. Did you really break it? Yeah, it's fine, but it's broken. We probably should explain what he broke. It's br- it's already broken, I know. It's fine. Oh, okay. I feel like you let that happen to me a lot. Yeah. Things are broken, and you let me break them. No. <laughs> <laughs> My iPad already had that dent in it, yes. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was going to play Tomb Raider, but then I looked over and I said, I have a lot of games that... Like like the HD collections that I haven't touched, so I put in, I put Devil May Cry two HD. I saw you playing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for Christ's sake! <laughs> and then I logged on like a couple nights ago, and I I was I, I had the the friend screen up, and I saw you and Aaron playing Dead Island. Yeah. And I'm like, should I just should I just put in Dead Island and join them, or and because I had the Devil May Cry disc, and I'm like, I'll just fucking play Devil May Cry. Mm-hmm. And then today when I saw you guys playing, I'm like, okay, I'll put in Dead Island, mm-hmm. and then. So I had to dig that out and hook up my hard drive. and But uh, that's what I've been playing. Okay. Marty? I completed Tomb Raider over the length of our next our last show. I'm still not... Like 100... you started and finished it? Yeah, I started it last cool. last week. I commend you. I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> it's a very easy playthrough. Not that the game's not difficult, difficult. but like you, you'll, you'll sit there and play for hours, I find. It's, okay. it's really easy just to sit down and, and stay there. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this game. Yet. Super duper fun, but past that, I don't know how much more I can say about it. The, the story is not really critically acclaimed. No, it's a basic story. The gameplay is the funnest thing I've played like last generation. It's almost. super fun, but I hate the voice actors too. Lara's okay. Her friends are rubbish. Well, that was one of the big issues. Um, I'm not sure if you read any like the reviews when it first came out, but all her friends are stereotypes. I think we talked about it in the podcast when we were covering it. Yeah, but they're all stere- you got the angry the- black woman, you got the- that the- uh, uh, Irish guy, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, um, you got the friend that'll stick by her. The nerd. Yeah, with the glasses and the escape button. Uh, and the the ethnic guy. I'm not sure what he <laughs> is. The Samoan or <laughs> he's he's Samoan. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was fun. The one thing I did know, I even told you about it, was when you upgrade your weapons, it actually shows them upgrade it. Your your um, pistol will be holstered, and your upgrades will be on it. Yeah, and the level of detail is, is amazing. Yeah, I love it. Even in the cutscenes, her weapons will be will be upgraded. Mm-hmm. So, 
I kind of I kind of like wish you had like all your weapons on, yeah. <laughs> Instead of just swapping out like the bow for the shotgun or something like that. I think it was a little uncharted-y. If I don't know how to use that uncharted e. Yeah, true. Sure. Everything was exploding as I'm running. I I hate things like that now. Oh, the, I think it's, at some points you do do the backwards run, like the camera's facing yeah. you and you run you towards do the, the camera. Run, yeah. Yeah. Everything's exploding and. Yeah. It was an action movie, I guess. It's, I don't know. I don't know if I liked it as much as I did when I completed it. Really? Yeah, I'm kind of second guessing it now. It's fun. I want more than fun, though. I liked it. I thought yeah, it was really good. It was super cool. But all right, anything else? That's it, man. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. more oh. sci-fi. Throw more sci-fi in there. You want to see more sci-fi elements? Yeah. Okay. In- Tomb Raider? No, I yeah. I didn't even like that stuff. I wanted to fight a T Rex again. Oh, good God! I wanted dinosaurs. Yeah, I mean that, it's kind of that's kind of classic Tomb Raider. Um, I want to do backflips too. But you gotta remember, this is her first. She's not an acrobat yet. She's not no. a soldier yet. She's just. You mean there wasn't a tutorial in uh, Croft Mansion? No, no, that would have been that would <laughs> cool with the old guy. Yeah, I remember the old butler guy in the first one? Uh, that was the third one, I believe. Oh. <sighs> And he has the maybe it's in the other ones. I don't remember really. I think but it's in the he, first one. He had the the, the tray. Yeah, and he shoot you the bullets and he put the tray up and yeah. then somehow blocks the bullets. Yeah, Matt, what are you playing? Um, I've actually been playing uh, Crisis Three finally on my PC. Oh. Okay, I want to play that as well. Now tell us about your PC problems. You had some issues there. It's so, too good. <laughs> PC's too good. Well, <laughs> so originally I had my I had three graphics cards, two seventy nine seventies, and a seventy nine fifty. One of my 7970s fans uh, started buzzing really bad, so I sent that back. <clears throat> when I when I received that card back, it was a different version, like version A.2, I think it was. So this is another port on it, but all the clocks and everything are exactly the same. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to take out the 7950, because originally my plan was two 7970s for good performance, and then a 7950 to get rid of micro stuttering, because my friend and I did a bunch of research, and that's basically what would get rid of it. But with the latest versions of uh, the drivers, they've actually had like a frame pacing thing to mitigate or like really, really reduce um, micro stuttering. But so now, so since that's there, I was like, oh, I'll just take the 7950 out and I put the other 7970 in there. Now there's a space in between. There's not three cards sandwiched. Mm-hmm. So now it runs a lot colder. I find that it's running a lot better. And with Crisis 3, before I could only run it on like, well, actually, I couldn't run it really run it that well. For some reason, I was at a point in the game where. I could run it. I couldn't run it even like on low. I couldn't run it on anything. It'd be like 10 FPS. But for some reason now, I booted up the game and everything like that. It was doing the same thing. I messed around with a couple settings, set it all back up to the maximum, mm-hmm. and now I'm running a solid 60, give or take a few moments. But I mean, so now that you've resolved kind of your issues, are you gonna do some more PC gaming or? I think so. I've been like actually with. I don't know whether it was this fix or whether it was because it was a new battle log release, but I was actually able to finally start playing Battlefield 4 again. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before, but they just like I would press play and the game just didn't do anything. Yeah. So I'm actually st- playing that a little bit this week as well, and uh, as well as uh, Animal Crossing this week quite a bit actually. <laughs> wow. So maybe I should pick that up. I don't. It's really fun. I would. I don't use my 2ds nearly enough. I I play that game like I play my DS just because of that game. Oh uh, yeah. So. And uh, I've been playing uh, like Marty. I played Tomb Raider Definitive Edition on my PS4. Uh, I I. Surprisingly, beat the whole game again. If you, what's the what? What are the obvious differences between that edition and the, like, well, mainly they upgraded all the all the, uh, the the graphics, and it's not just like it's going from 720 to 1080. They redid all the textures. Uh, Laura Croft, the, her entire model is completely redone. Did they? Did it need to be redone though? Did it need to be? But it looks amazing. Um, it's and, nice and, having it on the other other consoles too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it looks really good, actually, if you take a look at it. Okay, I first played Tomb Raider on the PS4 with you, and then I took it back on PS3, and it looked like crap. Really? Yeah. I started playing this, I was like, wow, this does not even look nearly as good as it does. So it's going to look fucking gross on the Xbox 360. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, they, they put a lot of work into it. They redid all the environment textures. like So it's not just Laura who looks better. It's like the entire world. They added Lara. more... Le- well, technically Mario. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they add more particles, so like um, uh, there's like more embers off of flames and stuff, and explosions have actual things that go flying. Just the new lo- face, right? Too. Yeah, her face is completely new. Light, what? light works a lot better. 
Um, you can actually see like a beam of light now shooting out. And um, let me see. Draw distance is a lot further, so you can see further into the in the distance, which is good for that game because there's some pretty good set pieces, uh, like in the boat yard. You remember the old shipyard? Oh yeah. That part that's that, really cool. good in that one. And uh, yeah, it's, it's overall pretty pretty fantastic. And you get all the uh, skins and all the multiplayer maps, which no one cares about, but they're there. So I played that, and I also played uh, The Last of Us um, DLC, DLC, which is called Ritcon. No. Left, left behind. Left, left behind, behind. That's it. I started that up today. I really want to finish it. What well, left behind sounds like it could be the sequel title directly to Last. Of Us. Yeah, yeah. Like that would be the title name. I kind of hope they don't make a sequel, but I do want more Last of Us. So it's the Last of Us. Did you <laughs> were Google move the images button? No. It was like it used to be web then images. Now it's just web news videos then images. Mm. I could, I could, yeah, I kind of like images next to it. Yeah, and then videos. Right, I think on I think on mine that's gone in, in entirely. Wait, no, never. Mind. It depends on what you search. Sometimes I get different uh, different headings on Google for what I search. Yeah. Face almost looks the same. Oh no, 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 no! The search bar is gone on mine now. You have to use the uh, the address bar. That's part of iOS seven, though. Yeah, I don't like that. Why? That's how your computer is, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't like it. No, oh, it makes it easier. It saves space. <laughs> no, that's not how my computer is. Oh, you don't have the latest version of Safari. With, 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 I don't have with the, the latest version of With the gigantic screens, you don't need to save space. Why not? <laughs> no, but on your iPhone with the search bar. All right, fine. Anyway, uh, let's move on to Ask the Marty. And uh, you have a few apps, or is it just one? I downloaded them all. Okay, so take it away, Marty. You want to help me because you got them? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. As you may or may not know, you probably do know that the Olympics are happening right now over in Russia. Canada's doing good. So when you open Third up the, right now for medals. Yeah, so when you open up the App Store, they have a little featured page for all the Olympic related apps, the official ones that are out. So I'm not sure what it's like if you're not in Canada right now and listening to this, what it's like for the American App Store, but they have a little CBC um app and that's probably the best one out of the bunch. You can stream live um live events or you can watch for past free. ones for free. It's all for free. Um, the way the app's designed is very much like a news app. So I, I, it's, it's, um, I'm sorry, which one are you doing right now? The CBC one. Okay. Yeah. Um, you got a bunch of little playheads so you can click on and watch, um, past events or the ones that are live. And the cool thing is if you click on the live ones, you can even rewind to see like if you missed something from five minutes ago. And and even even little timelines at the bottom will they'll give important things like they'll have a marker for like a goal. You can just click and it'll go back to that. Just to be clear, I think the CBC one's only in Canada. Yeah, uh, if you're in the yeah. US, US, you probably have NBC or something like that. Yeah, but I do you know what sucks about the NBC ones. Apparently, you have to pay. You have to have a separate subscription to get the NBC, NBC content. So yeah, like oh, watch like live feeds and stuff on, on the wow on the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing I like about this too is if you go to the medal table, it gives you a full breakdown of all the um, countries that have medals. And if you click on a country, for example, I click on um, Canada right now. It shows um, um, where Canada placed in each sport. It's it's pretty cool like that if you're looking for like a quick rundown. And really nice pictures of the athletes as well. Yeah. Yep. I noticed on the official Sochi app, uh, the athletes' pictures aren't that good. Oh no, they're they're terrible. Um, so that's a CBC one. That's probably your best bet if you're going to um, if you want to download one of these. Now, leading over the Sochi one, I had this thing crash three times when I first <laughs> downloaded it, so I do not have a lot of experience with it. Right away, it, it does yours load up for about five minutes? No, mine was pretty quick. Mine just kept loading, loading, loading. That I might, sat, sat there for five minutes, my screen turned off. So that might, a- might be because of your internet <laughs> connection, though, because it, it says downloading updates, right? No, like when it you didn't start say anything. App. It was just loading. Oh, well, I don't know. And then you, it brings you to a startup menu, and you got to select your country and time zone and everything, and mine crashed on that. So there's, <laughs> a, there's a skip option, so I had to skip that, so I didn't get to set mine up properly. Um, other than I, uh, to be honest, I gave up on this app. I, <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> I do not appreciate things crashing on me as soon as I open them. The and things, the things I didn't like about that one. It's ugly. One, it's ugly. Two, when when you're selecting like what you want to see, like you can only select like five events or something like that. Yeah. So it only tracks like five events. I, I want to know everything though. Yeah. You know. 
I'm a big Olympic Olympics fan, so I want I want to like know what, what's happening in every every event. Yeah. The, the the CVC app has been like my go to app for the last couple of days. Yeah, I, ha- I had I had it sitting on my desk today in class while while my screenwriting teacher was was teaching. Like mm-hmm. I just had the hockey game playing oh, on mute. <laughs> yeah. The third app is called the Olympic HUD, and um, their little tagline is um, "We're athletes and fans uh, interact" or something like that. Basically, it's just a little social social media hub, all right, where Olympic athletes and fans connect. And basically, it just um, it's a little news feed of all the athletes, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter posts. So there's a lot of crap on there. I'm gonna be honest, but uh, there's there's every now and then you'll get hit with a cool behind the scenes like photos of the athletes and it's kind of cool. I wish there was like a little translate button because a lot of the athletes don't speak English so you'll see a post every now and then in a crazy language you don't recognize um, you can sort by athlete or country or by sport it's um, so if you're looking if you're into the social media aspect of the Olympics this is the app you want and the coolest one of the Olympic apps that they offer is called the visa 360 cam it's not really informative at all but there's uh, seven seven things you can choose here and basically what it is it's a 360 camera that you can navigate with your gyroscope yeah gyroscope in your eye device and you can uh for example i clicked on the skiing one and the woman julia mancuso she's got a 360 camera not Xbox 360, but <laughs> yeah, we, we we got you. She has yeah. a connect on her head. Yeah. It's it's strapped on her. <laughs> head. <That'd be> hilarious. <laughs> it's strapped on her head, and um, using your gyroscope, you can look around at what she's looking at. Um, it works pretty well. Uh, I noticed there was a lot of stuttering, but it's it's cool. There's only about seven of them though. Um, other sports you got um, snowboarding, figure skating, hockey. And that's it. But you're gonna blow through this in about ten minutes. You mean like you'll just be done with it? Yeah, I don't I don't imagine going back to it. I mean if you want to show your friends, hey, check this out. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a novelty, I guess. It's it's a it's a novelty. There's no information on here at all. It's it's kinda of cheesy because the athletes have like a little voiceover as you're watching yeah. watching <laughs> the video. Mute takes care of that. Yeah. I'm I'm doing the ski jumping one right now. But it's they're they're the videos are about a minute. Or too long. They're kind of cool. Other than that, you're probably gonna delete this fairly quickly. <laughs> I don't know how much space. Delete it. Well, <laughs> I don't know how much space it's taking up, but I'm gonna clear the space after. <laughs> so there's your Olympic apps. If you're looking for social media, go with the Olympic Hub. If you're looking for actual information and video and streaming, go with the CBC app or whatever app is offered in your country. <laughs> well, yeah, Marty, you brought up. Um... I guess you've been following some Americans viewing of the Olympics. Yeah, I saw that in the news that um this one woman was so fed up with NBC that she's actually paying for CBC <laughs> so she can watch I guess where, proper Do you know where she was? Where she's living? I don't know where she was. Like, I don't know do people like close to the Canadian border do they get CBC? Cuz we get NBC and all that stuff. We get Do they get some of our stations? Probably not. Um it would probably. Do we just get their stations because it would be pretty boring here without them? <laughs> no, we 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 get we get their stations because we're close to the border. Yeah, like ninety like percent of Canadian population lives Is, within yeah within two hundred miles of the border. Yeah, so that's why we get a lot of their stations because if you do go up north a lot, like they like NBC and CBS and Fox and what's the other one? ABC don't go, go up there, so mm-hmm. you just have the Canadian ones. Um, but I don't know if they would. They won't need it, I guess. <laughs> they don't. But like, I, I, I've heard of people like going other way to subscribe to CBC just in general because mm-hmm. CBC is just like news coverage is way better than yeah. American news coverage. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. All your Olympics coverage needs. There was no official Olympics uh, video game, was there this year? There, I saw some Mario and Sonic do, the, the do Sochi games. or something. <laughs> they, they, they did those for the London ones too, the but, Mario and Sonic ones. But there was no official. I didn't see one this year. I'm oh, kind of disappointed. They're always bad games, but I mean, the one back in like the '90s, there was a super awesome one for <laughs> PS One. 
I played there even when it was in Olympics time. <laughs> I think about the Beijing one. Oh god. And that was that was alright. Curling's always fun. Oh yeah. All right, let's move on to our first story. Uh, now, we covered PlayStation Now, I believe, in the last couple episodes. Just to give you guys uh, a basic rundown of what it is. Um, I'm still confused. Why? It's, like, it's basically, you can stream video games to your PS3, PS4, Vita, tablet, and 2014 Bravia television sets. It's Netflix for games. That's a perfect example. Specifically for Bravia? I'm excited for it also. Yes. Sorry. The brand new Bravia televisions, 2014 or later. Why? Because they don't. They have to build in the technology to do that. Their old TVs won't won't have that. Mm. Although I guess it would just be software, wouldn't it? Uh, if, if you have a TV connected to the internet, you could just do a software update. But they want people to buy their new TVs. I'm not gonna do that. Well, it could. It, it, I, your iPad will serve as. Yeah, you can do it on your iPad. Okay. They could. They could want a, a, a better Nick in smart TVs. I don't know. See, if, if if I if they announced PlayStation now, I would have kept my iPad beforehand. <laughs> oh, they announced it afterward. Yeah. Just, just buy know. it again. You, you got your money just back. Your just buy it again. Back. No, but I bought it for cheap, and now I have to buy it for full price. <sighs> you got chapped. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can stream games. Um, I, they haven't announced any pricing plans, but they I think they said that you can either do a subscription, or you can like rent a game, and then play it for however long the rent rental period is. So, uh, games industry analyst, uh, we're talking about Michael Pachter here. You may know him. He's often on uh, game trailers. And I forget his actual job is. It's like Web Bush or something like that? Web, web, something like what that. What did you just say? You <laughs> say like, web I, Bush? I forget what it is. Yeah, it's something like that. Something like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. But uh, he has spoken out against um, PlayStation Now and says it has no prayer of working. Jesus. And some of his reasons are that, uh, this is a quote from him, PlayStation Now is a joke. There is no publisher that is going to license content that's less than two years old because they would be uh, concerned that they can't sell as many copies if they make it available for sub- subscription or rental. Isn't isn't the kind of the, the focus of this, I, at least how I thought it was, I realize it's starting with the PS3 titles, but isn't it supposed to be focusing more on the older titles anyway? So Yeah, it- but, but he, what, he doesn't think that... Um, not a lot of people are going to play the older games as much as they want newer games. What? No, please. Play, like, no, 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 but like people, people, the people who would be subscribing would want the newer games, but they're not going to have the newer games on there. They're only going to have older games. Well, that's that, that's not what PlayStation Now is for. That's what PlayStation Plus is for. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well. So. And, and, and just plan out buying the titles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And because like people, people who really want to play those new games, like they're going to, Hardcore fans like you and you <laughs> are going to buy them regardless. Like like people who want to own it, who want those collections, they're going to do it. They're not going to. That's true. These are this is for people like 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 Aaron. Aaron only plays free stuff on uh, on games for gold. Well, he buys the odd game, but yeah, yeah. but he, but he plays like like he would be the perfect person to take to take hold of that yeah and i would too i would just subscribe and play old stuff that i can't i can't find the disc for anymore mm-hmm. especially for people who don't want to play online anyone just wants to play for a story they can get any games that they didn't play before just kind of keep playing and then slowly that library will build up yeah because but the only games that they have shown have been ps3 games for now for now yeah it's probably just due to the concern of if i can't play my ps3 games on my playstation 4 uh, but you and that, but that will, oh, that will also come in with. Um, no, it is Gaikai, right? The Gaikai is the service it that became now. Okay. Yeah. I got confused. When are they looking to launch this? I don't know. I think the beta is running now. Yeah, or there were at least beta invites some, went out. Summer 2014. I think they want to get it up and going. Now mm-hmm. this, this thing works if I put in a disc too, right? Like I put in a disc and then PlayStation Now on PlayStation no. Four. Record. That no, doesn't no, no. work. No, that's, that's we had a, we had a story about that, about the emulation. Yeah. About PS One uh, and PS Two games. But not not for not, it doesn't work with Now. The, the yeah. PS Four is going to just straight up emulate PS One and PS Two. You don't have to subscribe to PlayStation Now or Plus if you have a PS One or PS Two disc, PS disc or PS Two disc. <laughs> you put that in, it will work. But not PS Three. No, PS3, at least not yet. And the emulation doesn't work yet either. Yeah, no, emulation hasn't been released yet. But when it does, in theory, PS and PS2 discs will just work. PS3, you need to do it through uh, the guy, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation Now. now. Yeah. Mm. Fair enough. So I think what Pact is getting at here is he's just saying that 
any game no older than two years is not going to be on PlayStation Now. I think that I think that's, that's fine. Reasonable. It doesn't mean it still won't be a success. It's although, like, although, like, when a game's two years old, I don't think they're selling many copies at that point. They're not. No, I don't so think why they're concerned. Yeah. Why wouldn't they put it up on PlayStation Now? That's why I kind of find his his statement invalid. Yeah, but. But but like and like but like Sony's released stuff on PlayStation Plus that has is less than two years old. Like mm-hmm. Bioshock Infinite. Oh yeah. That's and right. De- and DMC is like already there. And those were games were released March and January mm-hmm. respectively. So yeah. I don't know. I, I find Packard to be wrong a lot of times. Like, like he's not for video game analyst. I find him to be wrong quite wrong quite a lot. He defends himself though. I don't know if he has a show on on game trailers called um, Pack Attack. Pack Attack. Yeah. And he defends himself and says that he still has a job and he he gets like the business side right, but he doesn't get the predictions right all the time. Something like that. Yeah. But uh, I, and and I'm and I think he's gonna be wrong here. I watch the show every week. It's pretty fun. I'm I'm convinced this isn't gonna be successful though. PlayStation Some, Now won't yeah. be successful. I don't know. I'm just getting bad vibes from it. Why people people are hyped it, the pr- up. The price matters though. You're absolutely right. Price matters, but people are on like an, on a subscription Netflix high. Yeah, but those all add up. All those pres- all those subscriptions add up. Yeah, but you know you know what the beauty thing though is about Netflix is what, what did Netflix do? What did it do? They were they were first. They they were brand name. Yeah, they branded themselves as a household name. So if PlayStation PlayStation Now does it right and they get in there, like they'll they they can take the market. And they had to make all the deals with the publishers too. That's what uh, Netflix kind of did. They made all the deals early on yeah. and locked everything in. It's true. If, if done right, this can be very successful. Because think about it; those 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 subscriptions add up to like say sixty dollars a month, whereas my one disc is sixty dollars a month for one game. So for people who don't care about playing the latest thing, this is a really good alternative. And that, yeah. that's assuming I only bought one game that month. Yeah, yeah. But would would you would you subscribe to it though, Matt? Do you buy you buy most recent AAA games and stuff like that? I buy most recent games, but I just I still have my old consoles and my old games, so probably not. But like, if I, I I can definitely see the appeal of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For for me, if I had the time, I would subscribe. Um, but I would definitely look into it for like a game like on a per title basis. Mm-hmm. Like if I wanted to play, so you just do the rent option then? Yeah, I would just do rent option. If I wanted to play like an old Anamusha game on PS2, mm-hmm. I'd just fucking rent it. Now, if you were to subscribe, what would be the price you would want to pay? Because another one of Pactor's points, if you watch his show. He said that if you lower the price, you don't have as much money going to the publishers, and so they start to back out. But if, now, you, up, if you up the price, then no one subscribes, and then it's kind of the same is thing. Is PlayStation Plus required, too? They haven't, they haven't said anything about that yet. I, I think it's going to so be two separate. Yeah. I, I think that's going to be two separate services. It would be too amazing if it was with PlayStation Plus. That well, would be too might be a, a discount. Maybe they'll give you a discount. You pay PlayStation Plus. We give you 50% off PlayStation Now. But can you do anything internet-based without PlayStation Plus? Yeah, you can run. I think it's just for online gaming. Yeah, okay. you can you can still run Netflix and stuff like that. But but gold is different, right? Gold, gold, you need gold is a fucking rip. Off. Gold, gold, gold unlocks. You need gold to do everything. Hey, wait, you have it for free. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gold. You can't run Netflix. You can't. Nope. You yep. can't. It, it's like your Xbox ceases to function without gold. Correct. Okay. It's and the first thing shows up. It's like, please buy gold. And wasn't it for Far Cry 3 you needed to update it to play it or something like that? Yeah, so like what happened was is I was being <laughs> spammed to hell by a bunch of people. I was like, oh, the hell with this. So I unplugged my Ethernet cable, and then I went to go play Far Cry. And it was I signed in. It was like, please connect to the Internet. I'm like, what the hell? I had to, I had to connect to the Internet in order to play single player. Yeah. For You you asked what the magic price would be? Yeah. Nine ninety nine. A month? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or $8 even if they match Slap the Slap down a $10 bill, I'd do that. For unlimited access to the PlayStation library, mm-hmm. I'd do that. I, I might just do that just because of that, because of the price. If but would, would you wait for like better titles to get up there? Though, like imagine when they start, they're only gonna have like maybe like ten it, games. It, it, this is the thing though. Like for 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 a franchise that I'm really connected to, like say Bioshock Infinite Three comes out, and I want that that box on my shelf, I'm gonna buy it. Mm-hmm. But let's say it's a franchise that I, you know, half acidly care about. Siphon filter. Siphon filter. <laughs> Siphon filter. Well, people it? people love siphon filter. It's good, but yeah, I'm not, not gonna me. go buy. Yeah. Well, what what's the latest siphon filter? I fuck if I Dark know. Mirror? Siphon filter fourteen. <laughs> so like like if I don't care half assedly about that franchise and the siphon filter fourteen comes out and it's like I kind of want to check it out, but 
Yeah. And then it gets onto PlayStation now, then yeah, I would take advantage of it. First two were great. I played uh, I played some of the first one for yeah. the original love, PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. I love the first two. I, I agree with nine ninety nine. I think eight dollars would be a little bit too little, but I mean that yeah. they wouldn't be making money off of that. Nine ninety nine is marketable. Yeah. It is it makes sense. Yeah. Maybe eight if you have PlayStation Plus. That'd be nice. No, they're not gonna do that. They probably won't. It would be cool if they did have a, some of a discount. It'd be cool, but they're too smart for that. <laughs> and Sony needs money right now, so Sony needs money, but also just like just like they're 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 taking the small leaps leap of faiths forward, mm-hmm. and 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 I think that that's going to be beneficial for them because because if if like Games for Gold is modeled after PlayStation Plus, and if play, if Sony never did that, like Games for Gold would never emerge. Yeah, and and in five years, when 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 PlayStation Now is successful, Xbox is going to be scrambling to throw something together like this. Except their subscription base is going to be thirty uses of a game per year, and it's going to be eighty dollars. <laughs> f- and and you need Xbox Gold on top of the additional fee, and and only on the three sixty or something. Yeah, it's got to be plugged in. You know, even even with PlayStation Plus, uh, I think you can still do this. Like you can play like, the first hour of a game for free, and then if you choose to buy, your save like keeps going. See, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's never good. happened that's with good. Microsoft. That's real good. Yeah. So I don't know how Sony. Makes makes money off of PlayStation Plus, they, but they they must do they. Well, I think I think I think IGN was saying this on one of their podcasts I was listening to. They were talking about um, like say like Bioshock comes up on PlayStation uh, Plus. You download it and then you start talking about it and then you tell your friends about it and then it goes down from PlayStation Plus and then they go buy it or they buy the DLC or it, mm. it spawns it spawns some sort of income uh, for them. Mm. Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth it if it does nothing for them and it's just maybe Sony sends them a big check. Maybe that's all. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think the margins of profit for for games come down. So when it gets the like like when when money when it, when money stops pouring in pouring in and the publisher gets the majority of it, like I think that's that's when that's when they start throwing it up onto to PlayStation yeah. Plus. And games stop selling usually a couple months after they yeah. come out, yeah. where it just kind of trickles after that. But okay, let's move on to um, pretty popular story this week it was the uh, flappy bird now marty our resident app reviewer I you you tried this app i wanted oh, you to... actually have a, a i deleted it <laughs> why it's still in your i think you can still why would you it, do no? that i didn't i, I hated it oh. i thought it was a worthless game sell it for big bucks I wanted to avoid this. I saw people posting their stupid Flappy Bird scores on Facebook, and I didn't want to get caught up on it, caught up in it. But I downloaded it anyway. That night, I downloaded a bunch of horrible apps. Oh, that uh, that Tomb Raider ripoff was amazing. Yeah. Holy crap! But I, uh, I can't believe this this game was downloaded by this many people, and people loved it. And I, I hated it. Well, it was, it was the challenge, I guess, is what people liked. It was poorly made. It was <laughs> thrown together. I hate it. To be fair, it was a free game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It wasn't, you didn't but charge 99 there's, cents. There's so many good free games on the app. You still made though. a buttload of money off that. that though. The ads. The advertising, yep. Yeah. But anyway, if you have uh, Flappy Bird installed on your iPhone, um, you can sell it. I guess people are buying. They want the Flappy Bird. Crazy people are buying. I don't know how that works because the... the would you just buy the phone just for Flappy Bird? Yeah, that, that, that's how you, you, you couldn't you couldn't wipe it and use it as your own phone because it's linked to the yeah. other person. Well, yeah. the, the funny you thing would, is, you you would sign you would just manually sign out of everything and just wipe your passwords from it. Yeah, on a, on associate all accounts, and then they put in their SIM card if they want to keep it, and so then their phone number so gets rolled over. But uh, they can never sync anything to it. They can't put music on it. They can't. Uh no, you can yeah. manually manage music to it. Uh, you, if you, you manually to... manage music, you don't you don't have to. You can go past the. the... But what about like apps and stuff? Apps you wouldn't be able to. No, if you, uh, maybe not apps. But, uh, yeah, but, it's bit... but, but music and videos you can you can manually manage. You don't have okay. to sync them. You can manually manage. Not too bad then. I guess that, that's what I do. I don't like like books and photos and apps. I sync, mm-hmm. but music and videos I like just drag them over. I don't sync them. Okay. So uh, some of the auctions on eBay were going up to a hundred thousand dollars, but these pages have since been removed, and we don't know why. Well, to be honest, if you have an Android phone, I mean, it's a free app, so I think it's. Com- I think, 
it's perfectly legal to download the APK, and I'm sure there's an APK on some download site somewhere. Mm-hmm. And there's there's also a bunch of uh, uh, rip-off games going up right now. I think even, like, Fallout Boy had... Uh, oh, for Christ's sake. Fallout oh, Bird or something Fallout like that. Fallout Bird or something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Flappy Boy. Uh, real quick, Rayman Legends. Uh, pretty great game on the Wii U. Yeah. Awesome game. Probably my favorite game on the Wii U right now. Awesome game. Um, but it's on, it's, on, it's on all the other consoles. <laughs> I, <for> him to <laughs> say. I knew that was coming. <laughs> it's, on, it's on the other consoles as well, and it's now coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, but no PS3 to PS4 upgrade like has been offered on other Ubisoft uh, games. Like that $10 upgrade you can do. Man, they're really screwing this game up. They like delayed it. Right? You know what I mean? What was the reason they delayed it again? They wanted they, to have it across all systems on release day. That's right. And since they knew they weren't going to make money off the Wii U one, they went to PS3. Even though it is the best version. Yeah, it's a little bit... Yeah, if you if it's multiplayer, it's the best version, yeah. Man, they're screwing up. It's bad. They could screw up their Ubisoft. Okay, this, this next story is uh, kind of has Nintendo on the right track. Um, their next console and their next mobile device, I guess, which would be the next version of the 3DS, whatever it may be. Um, are going to be, DS. Uh, Curve yeah. screen DS. <laughs> Curve screen DS, yeah. Um, they're going to be like brothers. That's a quote. That's not me saying... Brother! Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so N- Nintendo kind of combined both their R&D departments for, for like, uh, console and their mobile. So they're all actually working together now. Because um, I guess it was a big hassle having them separate entities. If they wanted to bring a Wii game to the, uh, the 3DS, mm-hmm. it was a lot of work just to do that. Hmm. Now that they have to combine, so their next generation of consoles and uh, and handhelds are going to be more in tune. What do you guys think about that? Right decision. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I I love Nintendo, learn. but there's so many ways they could not execute this correctly. <laughs> I find it very Nintendo to to break things. Like like for example, with the Street Pass, I think Marty was saying this too with with us. We go to like Fan Expo. It's, you're like, oh, I'm going to get all these tags, but I have to sit there and mash A because it's going to only allow me to do 10, and then it's only going to ha- allow me to play with those people if I do it in order and all this crap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What does that have to do? But it might not have the power to load 100,000 people. <laughs> no, I understand that, but I mean, like, Nintendo should, like, like th- th- that isn't, like, a really game-breaking example, but what I mean is they mess things up that you just expect to work. Mm-hmm. Like, all the Nintendo IDs across all these consoles that were, like, separate now they're together. Mess, eh? That now, probably has to do with their their separate departments for each thing, you know. It was a freaking disaster. Yeah. So my eShop's broken right now. Like, yeah, you showed me that. It's that's been bad. broken for a long time now. That would that would annoy me. Pokemon, really I can't update my Pokemon and I can't play online with people. That would annoy, like if that was happening to me, I would be on the phone with it. I would be bitching out somebody at Nintendo. I don't talk to people <laughs> over the phone. <laughs> I, I I have a problem yelling at people in person, but when I'm mad and I'm talking to, I have no problem yelling at somebody on the phone. I don't get mad. I was talking to somebody this week about this, and I said that if Nintendo really wanted to like fix their financial situation, if what would they if they released a console that looked like the old consoles and just had like an eShop mm-hmm. that was like just virtual console, like a classic NES look, classic NES yeah. look, classic NES controller. You I, also comes with it N64 controller. Blah 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 blah. Hundred bucks. Not Only online they're eShop. Not, they're not gonna. They're no. not gonna. They're not gonna do that. <laughs> they're not gonna do that. <laughs> but I said, do wait, 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 but the, the, the that would sell like crazy. Yeah, right? I absolutely agree. I would in a parallel universe. But <laughs> the Wii Mini is kind of like that. It's not an old classic console, but it has the eShop on it. You no, can, it doesn't. Can, the Wii Mini. Yeah, it does not. Is it, it only is, game? It is. It is. It's disc? only Wii so. Wait, it's games. useless. It is yeah. useless. It is oh, only I didn't know that. There's it looks like no a internet. It that, has no internet. That's right. That, that's why oh, you were thinking about buying one, right? Because I was going to buy one yeah. just as a Netflix device. Because my, cause, like my <laughs> sister wanted the other one for that. I'm like, I'll buy it just for Netflix. A hundred dollar Netflix box. That's amazing. Hey, that's what Apple TV is. Ro- Ro- yeah, and but oh, that, their that, Netflix that, is that's terrible. HD. Though. That's Roku is sixty bucks. It doesn't even have a Wii inter. It doesn't have a UI screen. Oh my god! It, it, it works like it works like a classic PlayStation. You yeah. put in the disc and it just loads to the game. And that at first they only came to Canada, which was they hilarious. only came to Canada. So <laughs> like it was like we were a third world nation. And, and they made it red. Yeah, yeah. It's nice looking. I might want to buy one just to keep it in the box and store it somewhere, and hopefully one day it becomes worth something. It looks like a Tego container. Nothing. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does look like a Tego container. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, no, it is. It is useless. It, wow. they, it should. They should have done the other way. Not. Just have it digital. 
No, di- no, no, no disc, no disc yeah. but have it internet compatible. That would have been tiny, too. Yeah, that that would have been successful. Th- that's why I was thinking, but I guess Nintendo didn't even think of that. Because um, they're stupid. So I have a quote here from the president of Nintendo, uh, Satoru Iwata. He says, while we're only going to be able to start this with the next system, it will become important for us to accurately uh, take advantage of what we have done with the Wii U architecture. It is, of course... It, 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 of course, does not mean that we're going to use exactly the same architecture as Wii U, but we are going to create a system that can be that can absorb the Wii U architecture adequately. When he says system, what is he referring to? The next... The, yeah, the next, like, the next Wii. Okay. Or the next gen console for Nintendo. Why do, why, why do I care about that? Because, the, because the, the architectures right now are too different, so they have to wait till next... Next generation Nintendo hardware. Why tell us that? To fully implement it, because he wants you to know that there's a, a bright wanna, light at the horizon. I want to know things are going to get better right now. <laughs> they can't. They, they're just admitted they can't get better. <laughs> oh, Stark is just before dawn. The ship, the, the plane's crashing, but our next true. plane won't crash. They're telling <laughs> me. Um, Watch Dogs and Wii U will not launch alongside Xbox One and PS4 versions. <laughs> 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 Jeez, you just. <laughs> that's so funny that's, that really sucks <laughs> that system is just getting shit on <laughs> wait they oh that's horrible so first of all so, they they delayed so they, they delayed Rayman so it can go on the other consoles but they're not gonna delay <laughs> yeah, it yeah, Watch Dogs and the worst part is that Watch Dogs have been, been delayed heavily still, they said oh, April so to June good. I'm not convinced yeah so <laughs> April to June probably means late June it probably means August. What for Watch Dogs release on yeah. on, on, on PS4, uh, PS3, Xbox? Yeah, I, I, Xbox I thought on. I thought I read a date like June nineteenth. Uh, Last I heard, it's just what, that. What April, April to June? Yeah. I I, I um, it's June with a one in it. <laughs> so I'm calling <laughs> it now. Uh, so funny. So yeah, not only were, is the game already delayed, it's going to be delayed even further on the Wii U. Um, so. <laughs> I don't think Watch Dogs is real. I don't know how they can make that run on a Wii U, but uh, oh, Assassin's Creed Four runs on Wii, right? It the, does, but okay. no DLC. And, no DLC. Yeah. I think D- it'd be cool. D- DLC for Batman was canceled. Oh, there was no, no DLC for. Well, wait, wait. You, you think why the DLC was canceled? Because the DLC is pretty big, and it can't fit on the Wii U's little mini flash drive. <laughs> Did you hear? About I don't the... think it's thirty-two gigs big. No. No, but the, like, if you start launching a bunch of DLC, it's going to fill up your Wii U, and I don't think a lot of people have hard drives hooked up to their Wii U's. They should. Oh, that's where that's that's where the cloud implementation comes in. You got to just delete it as you go. That's true. Mm. The, the hard drive itself was worth more than the Wii U. You see what <laughs> WB said about that DLC? We're not going to fix bugs anymore. Oh. We're, we're too busy working on the DLC. That's what they. That's what they. The said. only yeah. the only bugs they'll fix are uh, if game story impeding. Uh, glitches. That's it. That's an if they want to. They're not doing that. It What's won- up with that? That's so. Weird. I don't know. There's people that can't beat the game. They get stuck on the death stroke part and it doesn't load past oh. them. That game was only good for the boss battles, and that's about it. Uh, I'm so upset with that game. Uh, t- you should play it though. I'm probably never going to play it. No, I, I, know, cause, cause <laughs> I, I recommend on, it. No, because they keep on getting these, uh-huh. and I'm very much enjoying reading these. So. So you don't want to ruin your Batman experience. I don't. Or... I love I love Batman and and like I like I'm not. I was a huge fan of Batman before the whole Christopher Nolan thing. Mm-hmm. So like I'm, I'm I like that character and I know I don't want shitty things like Origins or <laughs> it's great man. Dark Knight like, Rises to ruin. I like it. I like what you said, Marty. Like if we uh, what was it? If we were to send like a time capsule of, of humanity's best creations, mm-hmm. Batman would be on there. Yeah, Batman's <laughs> definitely in there. The Batman symbol right on it. On the on the time capsule, we said yeah, that'd be cool. Um, hundred dollar PS4 wireless headset has been revealed. Um, you gonna buy one? Yeah, you are. It's a hundred dollars. <laughs> That's so much. You 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 just wait, said wait. you, you know, just <laughs> you just said you're gonna buy a Wii Mini and store it away for a hundred bucks. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you're buying you're buying that headset. Isn't the camera a hundred dollars? The no, or is it cheaper? Sixty nine. I think sixty nine dollars. Oh, I'd rather buy that than this headset. But the, the headset's kind of cool. Um, it has 7.1 surround sound. Um, and it, it works with... Uh, you have to have PS4 update 1.60, which also adds support for the previous PS3 uh, fancy um, headsets, the Pulse and Pulse Elite versions, which I guess were pretty good headsets, right? Wait, so you can use those on your PS4 now? You can now, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. 
Um, I'm not sure... I know the, the, this newest one I'm talking about here, you can use it for both game audio and chat audio. I don't know if you can use the older ones. I might be getting it mixed up with the Xbox mm. headsets. Um, but the cool thing about these these new ones, the uh, the gold headset, as they're called, um, you can download an app, and then the app actually adjusts your headset's audio quality depending on what game you're playing. And the first game that's going to take advantage of that is uh, Infamous two, uh, Second Son. That's pretty cool. So well, I guess whatever the developer does to see what they can get the best sound out of those headsets, you can then adjust it with your app, and then you get the best audio quality through those headsets. So uh, I'm confused. So is there an app? Like, is it, is it an app that the developer has to use? Or I think they... it's going to be a Sony app. Oh, and then... And then whatever developer updates it with whatever game they want. Right. Whatever the latest game, like, say... So they, yeah. have, they have to support that app, essentially. Yes, I think so. Hopefully that... Well, that, I know it will die, but hopefully it doesn't. So yeah, it has the custom audio modes, uh, noise canceling microphone for voice chat, and customizable faceplates. Will these customizable um, settings just apply to anything you plug these headphones into? Like, like if I if I want to listen to music and just adjust settings, <laughs> you adjust it to infamous uh, sound settings. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that works. Yeah. I, I imagine it would. There you go. Isn't that all software though? You know what I mean? I don't know if it works in tandem with the PS4, the headset, and the app. Can I adjust uh, them myself, it, or just whatever the developer wants to do? I think it's what the developer wants. Oh, never mind then. I don't like this. Well, you have you you have an EQ on your on your whatever device you're listening to. No, so. I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I, I know for a <laughs> fact you do. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Fun little tidbit: I leave my EQ on flat. I don't have good headphones, so I don't do that. That might be the only yeah. Yeah. But the reason why I, I I walked when I was in Montreal, I went to this this high quality audio shop, and we asked them about equalizers, and they said they don't use or sell equalizers because the music, when it was mixed in the studio, they wanted it to sound the way it sounds. So you don't mess with your equalizer when you're listening to it, because that's how the band wants the music to be heard. Mm -hmm. No shit, but like if you gotta if you gotta lower your bass because your bass is yeah, it really depends on the speakers you're yeah. using. Yeah, yeah, that that that's where I use the the lower bands right mm -hmm. yeah so that's what i use my equalizer for is lower raised bass on, on your iphone what do you set it to so that it's that standard i don't touch that okay but like um on my itunes at home because my brother bitches about the bass rumbling like like, <laughs> like it, it'll shake his stuff on the shelf because it's oh, yeah even though it's one floor under like it'll just like start shaking stuff all right playstation vita slim was confirmed for the u.s it's coming i, I imagine that's canada as well Nope. <laughs> you heard it here. So we have those numbers that you were asking about last uh, two weeks ago, Adriano. 15% lighter, 20% slimmer, and it has an LCD instead of the OLED display of the original Vita. Now, I heard people were getting... Oh, fuck, I'm tired. People were uh, rushing out to get the other ones when they when this was announced because they don't want the LCD screen. What yeah, the, the OLED is, is noticeably better than the LCD, yeah. Sony doesn't say it is, but uh, a lot of the reviewers are saying that it, it makes a difference. Yeah, the screen, the screen type, I think, just generally dictates that as well. What about you two, current Vita owners? Yeah. Would you go for a cheaper LCD version? Like if I didn't have a Vita now? Yeah. Don't do it, man. I don't think so. I, I like the screen. Okay, you're, you're, let me, let me make you're a case. biased, Matt. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Let me just make a case for the other, the slim, okay? It has a longer um, battery life. So if that matters to you, you might want to go that one. And it comes in different colors. I don't care. I, everything everything mm -hmm. of mine is, is black, usually. So I just buy that. <laughs> so you'd buy, you'd buy the, the OLED display one. I, I I really like the display. To be, it's a, to it's be, a really nice screen. It's a really nice screen for a mobile device. 100% mm -hmm. honest. I feel like they could have went higher res, but it probably would have upped the, upped the price. Definitely. Well, the, I paid Why, $600. It's I don't know exactly what it is, but it's not like a Retina display or a Super AMOLED, whatever you call it on Android nowadays. Yeah, Super AMOLED. It's not like the the really tiny pixels that we're used to having on smartphones now. So I feel like it's when you pick it up, it's kind of like a step backwards. You have but, to remember uh, the, the 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 Vita is what almost two years old now, or it is actually. Yeah, yeah but the Retina display is yeah, stuff but, like that's yeah, been out for the, years. The the smaller the screen is, like you can get away with that. Like like I like I I've seen a non Retina display on an iPad Mini, and it looks just fine. Non Retina display on an iPad looks like poo <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i think like i think a non-retina on on a ps vita would probably be fine 
But so, then there are people who just bitch about everything. So if you do want the new one, um, they're coming with a special Borderlands 2 for Vita uh, bundle. And you get, obviously, the, the Slim. You get Borderlands 2 for Vita. 8GB memory card. And um, the cool thing about Borderlands is you can cross-save with your PS3 version. Oh, man. So that's pretty good. It's a pretty if, sweet bundle. Yeah. So I wonder... I Now, there's, there's questions about the um, uh, the saves, right? If you already have a save on PS3, can it come to the Vita? Mm-hmm. Or does it, like, you you, uh, you create a save on the Vita, and it can go to your PS3? Not both ways. It, it can't... I, mean, I, I thought the... I the, don't think they've answered that, though. Ah. Uh, because that would really suck if... Because me and Marty have hours into Borderlands 2. And if I can't play it on my Vita... It's useless. I'm not gonna get it then. Yeah. Good point. How and much that, is that bundle? Um, one ninety nine. Better not be over two hundred bucks. I don't know. I don't have the price. It's definitely gonna be over two hundred bucks. You get all the Borderlands two DLC packs. Not all of them. Uh, this all the ones that are released. So not one, that new one came out today. Oh, so just the ones that are currently released. There's there's four major packs in season one, mm-hmm. and there are three. Now officially four headhunter packs in season two, and a um, assault on something peak pack. It's like a separate one. Is that latest one the Valentine's one? That's that's head uh, headhunter pack four that came out today. Okay. And then there's the final. They said the final piece of Borderlands two DLC. No more after it will be an Easter themed headhunter pack <laughs> at Easter. And, and the Vita version also has four player online multiplayer. I wonder, it, it must be the full game if the saves work, right? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And could I play game. with you on your Vita when I'm on, on, when I'm on my PS3? Oh, I don't know. Nah, I don't, probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh. I, I doubt, if I, if I had Borderlands for PlayStation 3, I would go for that. I would, because I really want to play Borderlands 2 again. Like, I, I want to start true hunt, Vault Hunter mode. Have you, did you start that? I might have. I didn't carry on with it because the DLC came out. And, oh, okay. We wanted to use our good characters. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. because I wanted when I'm like when I'm done the final DLC pack, I want to just start over as true Vault Hunter mode, hmm. and run through everything. We have so many quests <laughs> just lying there. No, I, I went through all of them. I went through all the redundant ones. That, that has to be the most satisfying thing when you when you clear up your quest log. Yeah. You know. All right. Let's move on to Sony has discussed the state of the PlayStation Four. Uh, so take a, take a guess. What do you think is the best-selling games on the PS4 so far? Killzone, uh, Uncharted. There's no one, there's no Uncharted on the PS4. Oh, sorry, I mean the PS3. No, no, no. Um, there's only there's only a few selections. So I'm gonna say one of the sports games. Yeah, that'd be right. FIFA. Yep, FIFA 14 is one one of the best-selling. There's two more. Call of Duty. Call of Duty Ghosts and. Why don't I just look at the doc? Are you reading? Oh yeah, you guys have it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just guessing because there's only a few games on the PlayStation 4. And, and Battlefield 4. Damn it. <laughs> Holy crap, I wouldn't have guessed that, actually. That's a bit surprising with all the trouble they were having. Oh, People God. still bought that. Um, also, 90% of PlayStation 4s are connected to the internet, which is really surprising, um, as it also took the PlayStation 3 three years to even reach just 70% of people That's connected. It. Make it make it freaking mandatory. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> yeah, they, they well, yeah, yeah. It's probably mainly due to that uh, PlayStation Plus. But the, but the there aren't, there aren't nearly as many number of PS4s out there as there are PS3s, so... That's true. That, 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 that percentage will go down as more PS... Also, things were different back PS4 then. PS4 comes out. Yeah, sure. We, we, remember, the PS3 and them started with tube TVs, and they look perfectly fine on tube TVs. I'm, I'm just saying, as they sell more PS4s, that 90% is just going to come down. But, the, but the, 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 the point is that the PlayStation 4, it's only been out for two, three months? Okay. The PlayStation 3, out for three years, 70% was connected. Oh, but you're, I see what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, but we had well, to, to see the numbers once PS4 is three years old. Yeah. Okay. Or what was PS3 like at at three months? Yes. Okay, I see. And uh, PlayStation 4 gamers, they've shared their gameplay and screenshots 48 million times. 1.7 million hours have been spent live streaming. Uh, Jesus. That's, that's through like Twitch and, and UStream. And uh, do you have to have a do you have to have a subscription for UStream? I don't know about UStream. I know. Twitch, Twitch is free. Yeah. Twitch is free. There's a account, I think. 172 million hours have been played online. Jesus Christ. So, and also in in terms of um, sales, PS4 nearly doubles that of Xbox One in the US, and even even worldwide, it's still number one uh, selling console right now. 
So it's pretty good. Looks pretty good for uh, Sony right now. Plus, it's being it's constantly being commended on running things better than the Xbox. Yeah, so, I have a I have a, I have a kind of like a story that kind of talks about that coming up. That. <laughs> uh, but the um, I was gonna say this it's pretty sold out. The PS4. I I guess they're they're they keep replenishing their stock and it just it just goes away. It, it's ridiculous, actually. Mm-hmm. It, it's actually... I, I almost wonder whether it's going to be like this for another holiday season. <laughs> it's going like to be I, a year before any yeah. consistent PS4 show up on shelves. Because I'm pretty... Well, wait. With the 360, I know it was out for a few months, but was it this far? I can't remember whether it was like summer when it started becoming like common, like you just kind of walk in. I feel like it. it's still a bit early, yeah. I think, it was, I think it's summer before they start becoming common. What about Xbox One? Are they common? You just walk in and buy one? You can you, have to, you can find Xbox Ones more than you can find PS4. Fair enough. Yeah. Maybe last month I was in, I was in Best Buy in the US, and you, they had a bunch of Xbox Ones stacked up, like, like the actual <laughs> boxes, just, just stacked there waiting for people Maybe to buy an them. an Xbox One fort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, our next story here, Microsoft will fix Xbox One party chat. Um, now, I have no experience with this, Matt. Maybe you can tell us more of what's happening with the, uh, the party chat on the Xbox One. Um... I don't know what. Okay, so I don't know whether they want to fix the 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 chat itself or. I think I think it's the joining of chats. Okay, yeah, because I was gonna say that's where I really noticed it. It, it's weird. So I start a party, it snaps it in, or if I'm just in the home, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then, so I say I invite Adriano and I invite Ryan. I, as the host, have to enable chat, but I also think that you guys have to enable chat. Because as a party, I, we can just become a group, and I can just send an invite to you. Or I, can, I think I can send a text message. But <laughs> you guys have to enable chat in order to chat. Why would you be in a party? Oh, never mind. I guess you don't have to chat if you're in a party. But but, but to be fair, it was it makes a lot more sense to just, by default, enable the chat and allow yeah. you to disable if you don't want to hear it, it over your speaker. It was so easy on, on 360. I know. Chat but, was simple. To be fair, though, it works, and the headset's significantly better than the PS4s that comes with it. Yeah. But... And even the PS4's chat is, is a little bit tricky at times. It, it, it's I remember, weird. I remember last last night when we were playing, um, at the very end of here, like, how do I leave this thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess they're having updates that will uh, fix that, and they USB keyboards will be able to be used, and battery power indicator... That's not on the Xbox One? Correct. And storage what? management. There's, yeah, you can't tell how full or empty your battery is, so you're, if you, it just dies randomly. Are you, you think kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. The my, my controller died they about doing? <laughs> my controller actually died, and it's a, it's that it's that for day one one, so I was like, oh, crap, did it just break? Because like, a lot of them are broken, right? Mm-hmm. Nope, just dead. So but with those updates, you're going to get a battery indicator finally. Yeah, how get, is so, it? That's day one stuff. Day one patch, yeah. Um, Ew, so yeah, here's that here's that story about the the um, performance of the Xbox One. Uh, a lot of games like Call of Duty: Ghosts, Battlefield 4, Tomb Raider, have performed better on on the PS4. They've been running at 1080. Um, a lot of these games are reaching 60 frames per second. I think Tomb Raider runs at 60 frames, but they were aiming for 30. It's probably more stable at 30, but can go up to 60, I guess. It, pro- it probably you probably if it fluctuates, you notice it more, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, some interesting news came out. The Sniper Elite Three senior producer Jean Baptiste Bacado, I think that's how his name is spelled or pronounced. You're always having trouble with the I know. names. <laughs> he said the Xbox One development process will get better over time, and he will hopefully be able to achieve 1080p with more regularly on the Xbox. So do you, do you think this is going? This is do you think this is a big issue? Do you guys really care? It does not matter to me. No, not really. Well, it's it's strange. Like, it makes sense what Jean Baptiste is saying here, where he's like, over time, like the developers basically in, will in, get used to the system, right? But the thing is, they're not used to the PS4 yet, and they're it's performing fine. So that just means the PS4 will still, in in theory, will still perform better. Yeah, and this guy even said that it's, it's kind of like the reverse of last generation. Hard to code for PS3, easier to code for 360, and it's now switched places. PS4 is a very friendly um, console to, to developers because Sony made it for developers. I don't know if you guys remember, but they went to the developers, asked them what they want in a console, and then put that in. So That's good. 
I find it a bit ridiculous that 2014, we can't just always achieve 1080 60 frames. Well, as I hate to say this, but as a P, like a lot of people that I know are PC master race, if you know what that is, <laughs> yeah. and like extreme extreme PC leaders. And they always say that like the console is basically a a low end PC that just runs everything on low, and, and if it runs shitey, then you just can't do anything about it. So uh, it 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 kind of lends a hand to that. It's just kind of like the, the the console is just a plug and play deal with it sort of situation. Mm-hmm. I almost tre- feel like it maybe treated like that by developers too much. Yeah. So because even last gen they're like oh it's 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 the HD HD generation right yeah but it's only 720 which is HD but. You know, you have Blu-rays being 1080, and we were 520 already 520 is technically HD. Oh, that's sad. Well, it, it, but as kind of like what Marty said earlier, it's a, it was a different age back then. They we, we they were originally good on CRTs. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like I had a CRT. They still for shift a long time. with the the uh, the AV cables, right? Yeah, like I have a bunch of them. CRTs still look good, depending on what you're doing. It look, yeah, it's true for TV watching. I watched it on a big cabinet TV from the 80s. If you watch Standard Def on an HD TV. Poop. It looks like shit. Yeah, looks standard like, def look, looks, looks better like on a standard def TV compared to standard def on an HD TV. Correct. It looks good. Now here's a hilarious story. Titanfall on Xbox One does not run in 1080. It runs at 792. Sorry, on Titanfall on which one? Xbox One. It's only on Xbox. 360. It's only yeah. Well, it's on PC and 360. Yeah. But, That's, uh, but on Xbox One, it does. It runs at 792p. What and Xbox hell? 360 is going to be 720. Now, this is for the beta, and they, they're saying that the final build might feature higher resolutions. But I think, as we all know, the, the Xbox One... Um, what's it called? DDR3 RAM? Upscales it to 1080. Yeah. And yeah. On, on their blog, it, they, they pointed out that um, most games run at non-standard resolutions and then are upscaled to common <laughs> benchmarks like 720 or 1080. 792? Yeah, it's <laughs> a bit weird <laughs> number. Well, what would the what would the, the 16 part of that be? 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Mm-hmm. What would the what would the width be? I have no idea. <laughs> 1480 something? Uh, no, it'd no, be less. No, 1480 be would be... be higher than that, no. So. 12 something. 13. I'm going to figure this out. Yeah, we need the... <laughs> day one patch math. Like this is the second time we've done this. I know. <laughs> Jeez, that was bad. <laughs> and, and remember um, Rise? It ran at 900p. 900p, yeah. And they upscaled the 10. At least that was like a solid number. That's true. Like yeah, 740 by 900. P. Now Microsoft is defending themselves, and they're saying I don't feel like calculating. They're saying great games like uh, Forza runs at 1080, and um, Connect Sports Rivals runs at 1080. I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. You should get it, man. I don't. I don't do motion games. I just talk to my connect. <laughs> Does upscaling really work, though? Do you guys it, notice, notice a difference? My eyes are terrible, so yeah. Mm. They, you will notice a difference uh, for uh, when something's true 1080 and then yeah. upscaled. But to be 100 percent honest, I mean, when it comes to a console, I just plug it in. If it's working, I just let it go. And I think that's what most people. I know do. games aren't really about graphics, to be honest. You know. Oh, uh, so there's a some, lot of people would disagree with you. On a lot that. of people would like, no, I, like, disagree. I, I agree with you, but there's a I lot of people who argue that. I disagree with me. Like most of the news we get in the past couple of months have just been about the graphics yeah. of games. Few people all cry about resolutions. It's just eye candy, really. I mean, it it, it lends nothing to the game, um, uh, unless you're like searching for stuff. I don't know. But yeah, that's uh, there's the show. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good Valentine's Day. Since, what, what what is their time at? Uh, hour three. Oh. That flew by. Did it? Yeah. All right. Well, it just felt like we sat down. Follow us on the Twitter. Follow us on the BBM channels, now available on iOS. Hey-o. All right. Explain to me what the hell the channels are. Okay. So I'll, I'll do a quick rundown. So for the for you, um, I I was gonna say iPod, but whatever. So your your <laughs> iDevice, your iDevice, and your you iPods uh, out there. <laughs> so, you know, for you uh, for you iDevice users and your Android users, uh, you've recently received or should have received BBM 2.0, I believe it is. I didn't download it. And well, anyway, it's an update regardless. And what it is is you get you get a bunch of features, but the main thing that Marty's asking is channels. So channels is basically like I'll just give an example. So for us, we have the Day One Patch channel. You can go there. You can subscribe. And we put up posts. So I say, you know, like follow us on, you know, this mm-hmm. or like you can like check this out or check out this news, this picture, whatever. Are they you better can... than groups? 
Grooves are for chats. So this thing is basically like this thing is like basically like this. I I post like in a, in a group. It can only have a chat. That's all I can do. I can post pictures. That's it. This is like I post like a news article, for example. I can post a news article. People can like it. They can comment on it. They can whatever. There's also chats inside of groups or inside of channels. Sorry. So you can go in there and you can do all kinds of stuff. Okay. And companies do it too. I like it. Like I like I subscribe to like Good Deals Canada and like they post like <laughs> Walmart has this deal today and it shows and, pictures and, and whatnot. And they have verified channels, right? That's what that little check mark is. Yes. So. There's verified channels. There's unverified. We are not verified. <laughs> so, yeah, follow us on the Twitter, BBM channels, uh, iTunes. Like, like us on Facebook, subscribe on on YouTube and iTunes. Just our do proud, everything. Our Jesus. proud achievement, iTunes. Yeah, it took for freaking ever, but pretty easy now when we think about it. We didn't have to do the uh, XML script, right? That's true. Although which, we did have one working, right? We you wrote one. Phone. Yeah, we had, we had one working, but then 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 we, then the, the 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 test system of iTunes is like, yes, this works. And then we ship it, and they're like, we don't like we don't like your host bit rate. Yeah. Well, why did your testing system say approved? So we're still champions of doing it ourselves, but we used a third party website because it's just easier. Yeah, I like being champions. I like, <laughs> I like the sound of that. Okay, so yeah, see, see you next week, um, I'm pretty sure, and hopefully we'll have a big episode for uh, episode 50 coming up, hopefully in two weeks. We'll, keep you, we'll keep you posted on um, on the, the... Special guests? The, the different following social groups. Pat Pactor's coming. Michael, Michael Pactor <laughs> will be here. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you guys next week. Peace.